Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Rolf Elmer aka Jam Elmar about the Jam and Spoon classic Follow Me. But we also spoke about the brand new Jam and Spoon Triple Medic Fairy Tales book which just came out. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Follow Me by Jam and Spoon, my interview with Jam Elmar. Enjoy! Rolf Elmer aka Jam Elmar is a German based DJ and producer who is active in the music scene for more than 30 years already. In my previous interviews with him, we already discussed some of his biggest classics while sitting down in his beautiful studio in Frankfurt, Germany. On October 19, 2023, Rolf made a visit to the Amsterdam Dance event for the official presentation of the Jam and Spoon Tripomatic Fairy Tales Coffee Table Book. Also Black Hole CEO Arnie Bink, designer Klaus Mai aka KM7 and editor Tim Stark were joining the presentation. Right after the Q&A part, Rolf did a special DJ set and once he was finished, I had a chance to sit down with him for an interview. For this special occasion, I decided to ask him about the story behind the Jam & Spoon track Follow Me, which actually was the B-side of the Jam & Spoon hit single Right In The Night. And of course, I did ask him more about the beautiful Triple Medic Fairy Tales book as well. Oh, well, first of all, how are you doing? Of course, I'm doing fine. Good, good, good. It's great to be in Amsterdam for the ADE and in the pop-up shop of uh, Black Hole Music. So, uh, yeah, man. Hi, good, good, good. So, yeah, in the last few years, uh, I had the chance to do six interviews with you, with you already. Uh, and I'm very happy those interviews uh, always get some really good feedback. Cool. Uh, one of the Jam and Spoon tracks that gets requested a lot for an interview is uh, Follow Me, which is actually a B-side of uh, Riding the Night. Mm -hmm. uh, first things first, do you still remember how you started to work on Follow Me? Yes, um, Mark came up with the idea for the B-side to make something that's totally club-wise, you know? Because Right in the Night was more of a, you know, uh, like a hit record. We tried to, and we had to deliver a, rec uh, a hit record for the label. We said, you know, we need something to make the record sell, the album, the album sell. So, yeah, so we did Right in the Night and um, for the release, for the single release, we, we had, to, of course, to do a B-side. You know, on vinyl there was an A-side and a B-side and sometimes a C-track. But uh, yeah, so we decided to do something really crazy, you know, to make a, a, like a counterpoint to the more commercial A-side. Mm -hmm. And um, there's this one sequence in the middle, you know, it's like almost like a C-part of Right in the Night. And we took this sequence as a basic core for follow me and uh, as we were evolving the track uh, and developing the track um, yeah um, Mark came up with this idea to make this uh, this um, you know funny sound that goes up and down you know mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so yeah I hit the JD 800 which was my favorite key keyboard at that time mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and um, developed the sound, and uh, yeah, that's follow me then. And then we recorded his vocal, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had this idea uh, switch on the microphone, and we went to the other room and we recorded the follow me and uh, assembled it into the S1000. And uh, yeah, that's follow me then. And who's the voice of follow me? Yeah, uh, it's Mark. Oh, it's Mark. Uh, hey, I, I always wonder that. Yeah. yeah. No, so you already said like, yeah, "Follow Me" is not your average track. Uh, I love how it starts with some uh, mysterious, ambient, trancey sounds. Then it takes like two minutes before we hear the first kick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the, the track changes into some techno track, and the, the tempo changes. It, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, at that time it was very, you know, um, the uh, the music, the you know, electronic music was not very, was not so much like in genres. Mm -hmm. It was more like an open book. Yeah. Where you could do like crazy things and uh, we were crazy enough to uh, you know um, to f uh, use every uh, thought or every crazy idea to mm, and put it into music mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah 
Also in Stella, we already tried something with a tempo change. And with this, we did something with a tempo change again, yeah. which is uh, sometimes when I play it these days, um, you know, people have a different feeling of timing. Uh, sometimes I think for them now, these days, might be a bit too long, but um, uh, yeah, it's like that. Yeah, yeah of course, I, I remember when we did the interview about Stella, because that one also doesn't, yeah. it's really difficult to mix in because yeah. yeah, it starts like really slowly. Yeah, after the after the breakdown, mm -hmm. there is like uh, I think four bars where you can like uh, with the CDJs mm -hmm. you can like loop it, and then you have. Oh, yeah, I'm clever. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, back in the vinyl days, it was like really difficult to track the. Yes, in. I know, I know. Yeah. You can just uh, you know just to begin with a with a pad or anything like mm -hmm. ambient sounds for the next yeah. tracks is uh, almost impossible to mix. Yeah, that's true. So, what other equipment was used for the track? Sorry? What other equipment was used for the track? Yeah, it was mainly the JD800 with this um, sweeping cell that yeah. goes up and down. And of course, my um, the god of synthesizers, uh, my Ronin system, sys uh, system 700, mm -hmm. which is like a giant mod modular system yeah. from 1975. And um, with this, um, this um, uh, um, trans gate sound was made. This da 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 da, which goes faster and faster. And um, yeah, and Mark was always pushing me. Said, "Make it harder, make it, make it crazy. It has to be even more crazy." So I tried everything what I could do on, on this system, and finally said, "You know, I think it's crazy. It's crazy let, enough. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do it like this." And so yeah. So how long did it take you to to finish the entire track? Actually, it was made in a very short time, I think two days or so. Okay, yeah. Oh, cool. That was, uh, it's like uh, with Stella or the Age of Love remix, uh, all these good German spoon tracks, you know, this, that became so iconic. They have been made in very short time, yeah. like in one day or so, yeah. you know. And sometimes these days I'm working weeks on tracks and, yeah. you know, the result isn't nearly that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, Follow Me came out as the B-side of the 1993 single Ride in the Light, uh, but it, it did not appear on the Triplematic Fairy Kills uh, album release uh, of the same year. So why was that? Because um, I think the CD was already manufactured. Oh, and, yeah. uh, then we pre prepared the single release mm -hmm. and uh, we needed a track for the B-side. Yeah. And uh, so it didn't make it on the, on the album. Ah, that's why, that's why. So yeah, Follow Me turned uh, 30 years this year, and during the years that has been remixed by people such as uh, Thomas Schumacher, uh, Roger Shaw, David Forbes, and Jerome Ismay, for example. Yeah. So w which version do you play in your own sets? That depends, you know, um, um, if I, you know, end up in a club that is more like famous for the um, audience or festival, that's more for trance, I would probably go for the more trancier yeah. mixes. And um, usually I pick up uh, the Schumacher remix yeah. because uh, now, it fits very well uh, in the in the time now, yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's a he did a very very good job. There are other remixes which haven't been released, but I hope we can maybe make them release very very soon. <laughs> uh, okay, already mentioned some names or uh, yeah, yeah. There's a um, there's one guy in England, hidden mm -hmm. identity. Mm -hmm. um, well. <laughs> that's his name. It's true. Is he calls himself Hidden Identity, which also uh, um, um, did a very very nice remix years ago, and uh, I hope uh, we can bring it. Uh, we can release it very very soon. Fingers crossed. Yes. Yeah. I, I already mentioned the Triple Medic Fairy Tales album, and uh, yeah, one of the reasons uh, we're doing this interview is because it's 30 years ago this amazing album came out. Uh, yeah. To celebrate the 30th anniversary of the album, you just released a limited and numbered uh, coffee table book. So yeah, we're recording this interview uh, just a few hours after the official uh, book presentation here in Amsterdam. I know this book has been in the works for like ages. I I'm sure you're very happy that it's finally out now. I'm happy and I'm not happy because uh, the, the process of making the album was very exciting and was very joyful. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, you see, you're working with something, you see it grow and grow and grow. And uh, now finally it's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's of course the result is amazing, I think. And um, but um, yeah, it was also a lot of pleasure to bring it into life, you yeah. know. So who, who came up with the idea of the book? Um, Arnie, um, the uh, CEO of Black Hole, he yeah. had the idea to first he had the idea to make something like um, I want to release an album where, where every German Spoon tracks uh, is remixed. And I thought, oh, wow, that's very ambitious, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> because it's a lot. And uh, 
you know, so some are really funny and probably not even uh, made for remix. Yeah. Anyway, um, then he showed me uh, about what, what they are releasing at the moment. There was this book by. Um, uh, uh, anyway, and uh, but then then we, we we came up with let's make a booklet with uh, the CDs, and the booklet became you know a big book now yeah. with almost two hundred pages. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Tim Stark was also involved with the book. Uh, I think he's responsible for most of the writing and the interviews. True. Yeah. So you did you did talk to him like a lot. Uh, yes, of course. Um, I, I was introduced uh, uh, to him during um, when I released uh, tracks on Marcus Schulz's label, and um, the, the, uh, I got introduced uh, through this also at ADE. And uh, since this time, we I always kept sending him music, and he did uh, some reviews. And I thought um, that he would be the ideal person to uh, yeah. Um, yeah to make the the wording and everything yeah so what, what else can you tell about the book you already said like it's almost 200 pages yeah it's um actually a, like an art book i would say because it's full of graphics by uh, klaus may who also did uh, the graphic design for the first two german spoon albums and i thought it would be uh, thank you <laughs> i think it would be like more logical mm -hmm. enough than uh, uh just the cover uh, to uh, get him again and yeah. try to convince him that he should do the graphics because then it's um, like um, it's, it's like a like a consequence yeah, exactly. of uh, art you know uh, through all this time and he I think he did amazing graphics on this yeah and, I love uh, his stuff so yeah. yeah and um, yeah so it's it's a book to enjoy to 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 look at but also with nice interviews and. Uh, probably some facts that uh, you haven't really heard about mm -hmm. before. Okay, good. So I think it's like a limited edition of a thousand copies that are like numbered. That's true, yeah. And you have to sign them all. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I signed all the badges, which yeah. are, you know, yeah. like put inside of the book mm -hmm. uh, to say, you know, this is number 764 or something. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, you know, signing <laughs> 1000 badges was a little bit of a, you know, when you reach like 831 you don't know what you're doing yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just uh, funny you know so i think the, the book also contains like four cds mm -hmm. what, what can you tell about that it's like um the uh triple medic fairy tales 2001 2002 and 3003 and uh, a whole cd with all the remixes on it yeah including the stellar remixes by weber which are not available, I think, uh, um, we, uh, I don't know if they are available, but, but um, I think they're just uh, exclusively, for, uh, yes, exclusively for the CD. Ah, good, 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 yeah. yeah. Some of the new remixes of the classics are by names such as uh, Mike Bush, uh, Pig and Dan, yeah. uh, Alec Di Stefano, Nicholson and others. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen people already asking for a vinyl release as well. Do you, Do you think that will ever happen? Yeah, it's uh, actually a lot of people are, uh, mm -hmm. they, I think they expected yeah, to yeah. Um, be like, because it also has, it has the shape of a mm -hmm. 12 inch. And um, yeah, it's um, maybe, maybe for uh, next year, maybe. I will talk to Arnie and <laughs> yeah, good, good. <laughs> um, yeah, the beautiful artwork in the book is made by Klaus Meyer, AKA KM7, you already mentioned him. Yeah. Um, so he also did the artwork for the Gem and Spoon releases back in the day, but also for the Tokyo Ghetto Pushy project and more. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you and Klaus also know each other for like 30 years. Uh, correct, yes. Yeah. <laughs> How did you meet Klaus? Um, through Mark, Mark Spoon. Uh, because Mark was um, opening a club in Frankfurt called Excess uh, with um, a good friend of him, Alex Azzari, who was actually running the uh, Museum of uh, Electronic Music in Frankfurt. And uh, they opened this club, um, and of course they needed flyers. And uh, they knew that Klaus is doing something like this, and uh, so there was a connection. And um, when we um, were, were thinking about releasing the albums, um, we also were very ambitious about the graphics and stuff. And uh, so Mark said, you know, I know this guy who I think he can make a proper, we can make proper yeah. artwork. And he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. And. Uh, Especially the first CDs, uh, which have been like in this, um, I don't know how you call it, but you can like unfold it on, uh, you know, yeah, like up, in lay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And these are the m 
uh, uh, the most interesting ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the artwork. It's amazing. For yeah. is she still making the artwork for your recent releases? Sometimes, yes. Uh, um, yeah, I start working. I start working with him on my own label, Jamal Marek, and um, the first uh, couple of, of um, uh, uh, covers he did. Yeah, yes. yeah. Because I saw them, I was like, okay, yeah. it must be K and Seven. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you. You look at it and you. How you know it? Yeah, it's, it's close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, speaking of uh, new releases, can we expect some new uh, Jamal Mar releases soon? Of course, yes, I'm working on it. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> so I don't want to slow down. I, I mean, of course, when you talk about um, 30 years anniversary, you can estimate that I'm not the youngest person anymore. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it's, uh, but I, you know, music doesn't, uh, has no age. You yeah, know, you, yeah. You, you just go on and do your best and uh, of course there will be future release and stuff yeah but also under other names or will you focus on jam elmar jam elmar yeah. yes and any collapse in the works uh collapse in the box no but um i'm always open yeah i mean you're at the ad you know so this is the perfect place for fossil networking right yes absolutely yeah. <laughs> oh perfect thanks all for your time and good luck with everything all the best all right that was it this week's rock the story behind follow me by jam and spoon my interview with Rolf Elmer, a.k.a. Jam Elmar. Rolf, thanks a lot for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button. Because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I did several other interviews with Rolf in the past. We spoke about the Jam and Spoon classics Stella, Right in the Night and Odyssey to Anjuna. Uh, I also did interviews with him about the Dance to Trance classic Power of American Natives and the Storm classics Storm and Time to Burn. You can find links to the interviews in the video description. And I also add a link there to the beautiful Tripomatic Fairy Tales book. So make sure to check it out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.